Okay, this is just a simple introduction to some of the work that Paolo Frieri did in relation to informal education. Um, he was born in Recife in northern Brazil in 1921. And even though he was from a, a fairly typical family, due to the economic downturn in the 1930s, as he was growing up, him and his family did have uh, periods of, of poverty. Um, and it's believed that this was a, a formative experience which um, led him to believe in the idea of fighting oppression. Um, when he had finished at school, he attended Recife University where he took a law degree. But during this time, he also uh, spent some of his time um, teaching Portuguese part-time within a local school uh, to try and help sort of indigenous populations learn learn Portuguese and at the same time uh, he was also in his own reading exposed to both the writings of, of Catholic intellectuals and to Karl Marx as well. This meant that when he uh, had finally finished his degree, rather than uh, going into a law career, um, he instead became a welfare official within the Department of Education and Culture um, within the state of Pernambuco in sort of northern uh, Brazil. And it was during this time that he was exposed um, to areas where there were very many poor people. And again, it was a, just a formative experience in him actually beginning to think about how he could uh, help people who were in abject poverty. Um, and it was this exposure to the urban poor which eventually led to his development of a, a dialogic process within literacy. In the early 1960s, Frieri uh, then worked for the Cultural Extension Programme of, of the University of Recife, uh, where he continued to work with the poor in terms of uh, literacy and, and helping them to gain if you like more local power um, to within relation to their own lives through through helping them become literate and when Brazil was taken over by uh, a military coup he then in 1964 went into exile and after a brief stay um, in Bolivia where he continued the same kind of work but where again there was another military coup um, coup. He then ended up um, in Chile and then from there he eventually uh, went to the USA for a period of time. But while he was in South America that's where he developed his approaches to literacy and emancipation and it was only on the return of democracy to Brazil in, in 1979 that he returned to the country. Um, where he then became Minister of Education for Sao Paulo in 1988 and finally died in 1997. The general uh, participatory approach that he developed um, to help in terms of literacy was based around the idea that literacy had to have meaning for people, that there was actually no point trying to teach people um, how to read and write um, if it was just sort of very dry literacy and wouldn't actually help them from day to day and therefore he believed in this idea of sort of critical literacy in, in working with people to find out what their needs were and then actually developing their, their literacy around that and this sort of five stage model just gives a, an overview of the system that he created in terms of developing critical literacy um, when he and others went into any particular area to begin with, the first thing they actually did was to uh, have an initial meeting with the local community. 
um, to try to understand their situation, to try to understand their needs and, and, and the things that they found important in terms of developing their own communities. And this led to them then uh, spending a period of time within the community, really just observing, talking to people, beginning to understand what the main areas and factors were that were important to the development of that particular community. This then went into a stage two where uh, the uh, researchers and local researchers that they had co-opted in would begin to discuss which factors seem to be um, prevalent and important within the community and looking at the kind of work that they might need to think about doing. And once this had been discussed, this would then lead to um, sort of investigation circles where um, people would then in, in, investigate particular issues around sort of uh, the community in terms of thinking about how best that that community could be supported. Having done that, there would then be a stage four where again there would be further study of the findings from that and particular areas of uh, development would then be identified and developed and then stage five would recodify those themes and would develop them some, them some further and part of that would be thinking about what resources could be developed to help people in their language learning. The idea being that the language that was taught in terms of reading and in terms of writing were based around um, the, 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 the factors and the areas of interest that had come up through the work with the community. And it was only after these themes had been codified and these themes had been worked through and the resources created that then a literacy program would start. The idea being that people then would be learning literacy within a very uh, concrete and, and explicit context and not only would they be learning to read, they would be learning to critically read. In other words, they would be learning to read but they would also be thinking about, through that, thinking about issues that were important to them so that literacy could be seen to be a very important central process that they could attain to help them uh, develop their own situation.